It's 7 p.m. on a Wednesday. The wife and I are watching some TV. She has to do some training. So she opens up her laptop, and she's doing this training. This dialogue box keeps appearing about every minute. She peers over to me and asks what this dialogue box was. As I look at it, that's when I knew. I failed as a fellow husband and cybersecurity engineer. Now, I'm not buff. I'm not cool. I can't claim to be cool. But the one thing I'm semi-qualified in, I failed. So I thought, why not make this a video? In, in today's video, I'm gonna be performing a basic malware analysis artifact cleanup on a Mac device, something I really have never done before. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where she got this virus from, and I had already wiped the live sample before porting over to a USB, so I don't have that contained anywhere, but I do have some artifacts which will showcase perhaps where this virus was and what it was doing. Now, a few things before I begin this. First, I'm not shaming my wife here. Everyone can get themselves infected. I've done so in the past. We're all susceptible. Honestly, I more so blame myself for not being a proactive husband and doing husband duties. Um, but yeah, I don't blame her. And luckily, the which brings me into my second point is after doing this artifact cleanup and removing the payload, this really wasn't a virus. It was more so a questionable adware for a torrenting site, as you'll see here. So now on to this virus artifact cleanup. Here I have my wife's device. This is a 2018 Mac OS Intel system. Uh, it's a MacBook Pro. And so, like I said, I have not really done any malware analysis on a Mac environment. So I thought this would be, be a good introduction into the world of Mac. So, so as mentioned, I eradicated the live payload and there are some artifacts, specifically the plist that we will investigate here momentarily. I have pulled up a, another sample that is equivalent to what I saw while I was trying to eradicate this quickly. So you can see uh, the file name PTUPDD. This is the exact file name that was coming up. And if we take a look at the SHA-256 hash, pivoting on a virus total here, you can see that 8 out of 50 or 62 engines picked this up. Now, this was kind of interesting. Um, some of the higher fidelity ones, specifically Elastic, uh, picked this up. So I figured maybe this has something to do with maybe you know malware. You can see Avast put this as PUP, which is potentially unwanted software or program. Um, so I figured perhaps it was some sort of adware that was automatically being installed. The next thing to note is that PTUPDD is a Mac O binary. So Mac O is the equivalent of a Windows executable or .exe. Uh, so you can launch and deploy applications using the Mac O uh, binary as it's known. So we can go through some of the file metadata here, as you would always do with your malware samples. After going through that metadata, the next thing I wanted to look at was the process tree. So I didn't have any active kind of procmon tool installed on her device. This was a quick little investigation slash eradication. So once again, kind of using a similar sample, you can start to see some of the file paths with where this uh, variant was deployed. Um, so you can see most of this is in the library section. In fact, I'm looking at this now, almost all of it was. Uh, and there is a few specific locations that will start to kind of be interesting or intriguing. First, you can see that there is this launch daemons. So something is maybe is going on in the background there. Uh, and then you can also see that there is this ptupdd.plist, which we will investigate here momentarily. Um, so this is interesting. It gave me a little bit of an overview of what was going on. So when I was performing this little eradication exercise, of course, I looked up how to remove ptupdd you know, really exposing my true colors here as a cybersecurity engineer. Uh, and I found this very helpful guide. So this guide went through and said, hey, this is the common locations that you would find this kind of adware slash variants located or deployed. Um, so as I went through this, this was kind of what I wanted to go through. So after I've located or identified, okay, perhaps this is some sort of unwanted program. The next thing I did was eradicate the live sample that was being deployed. So using the activity monitor, which is the equivalent of task manager in the Windows speak, um, we were able to eradicate the little binary. In this case, we can get the first glimpse into what PTUPPD was, which if we go to this screenshot, 
you can see that it's called Popcorn Time. So doing a search on Popcorn Time, you can see it's a streaming kind of service. Uh, it is a legal service, but there is a torrenting functionality, which would allow you to illegally download movies, shows, you have it. So um, I knew at this point, mm, maybe something is wrong here. Uh, so I eradicated the example by just literally, you know, of course, just ending the task. Um, and the next thing I wanted to do is now start to investigate or identify metadata and perhaps where this sample was living and perhaps some persistent mechanisms. And this leads us into kind of the next part of the analysis, which is plist and directory listings. So up on my terminal screen here, I have redacted my wife's username just for the sake of privacy. Uh, so I just have this little PS1 prompt here. Um, so one of the first things that I did was uh, I just did a quick find command on the uh, dash name of upt.updd. Um, and I went through some of the file path locations and some of the ones that uh, actually found that the sample were listed in that guide. So I knew that we were probably on the target there. Um, so one of the things that I stuck out to me after doing this fine command, I'm not going to perform this because it will show her username, but um, what you would see is that it would populate this little binary program under the uh, application services uh, under the library. So we went to application support, not services, and I knew at this point probably some sort of popcorn time. So I went to application support, popcorn time, and in the popcorn time, there is the following static files. And this gave me a little bit of an indicator into perhaps when she downloaded popcorn time. Like I said, it's not, you know, I'm not, it's not illegal. So, um, you know, she maybe was, I don't know, watching some movies or something at one point, but uh, you can see that it was in 2018, September 27th. So perhaps this little application has been installed for a while. Um, and what I suspect happened was that she downloaded perhaps an update of Popcorn Time. And this then, of course, or maybe it just ran in the background an update. And this maybe pushed some sort of like, hey, you know, little dialogue box, something that'd be just really annoying. So I looked into these static files, found nothing of, you know, really value here. Uh, just some, like I said, it's a, it's a standard application. So the next thing that I wanted to do was looking at those file paths listed in this guide, I knew that we were on to perhaps the persistent mechanisms. Uh, so the things that I've always wanted to do, and now I had an opportunity to do it, was plist investigation. So uh, plist or property list is a uh, file, a native Apple file to macOS ecosystems, which allow you to store metadata file uh, or metadata information on applications. So think of settings, for example, that you would want to uh, save for, you know, your, maybe a custom application or an application. Um, the plist would store those settings for you. Now, if you're just a regular Mac OS user, you're not going to see plist files commonly because they're stored in more of those root level directories, as well as sometimes they are hidden files. Um, so what I wanted to do after you know going through this was find out if we were still in the persistence of mechanisms, and in fact we were. Um, so here you can see we have launch agents, launch daemons, and then we also have the root file system launch agents. So this is her home directory or your home directory, and then this is just the regular I don't know library directory, but. Doing a quick Google search on launch agents and launch daemons showcases that malware in the macOS world commonly will reside in these for persistence and they'll use a plist file. So launch agents is the uh, area or location where background services can run after your user logs in. Launch daemons does not require the user login. So this would require root privileges to view this uh, this area. But basically, once you in log into launch agents, then it would you know populate the applications that you have in the background, as we will see here momentarily. So I knew at this point, 
if we can get rid of this plist file or perhaps you know just kind of play around with it we could definitely figure out something um, so going back to the terminal screen uh, what I did at this point was I just went into the root directories library and I did a launch uh, agents Okay, and performing an ls here, you can see some of the plist files. So specifically, we have OneDrive, some Microsoft, and then we have pt.updd. There you go. So that was, at this point, a investigation. So whenever you are investigating Mac OS malware, take a look at the plist files, if there are plist files that reside, because commonly these are used for, like I said, persistence or uh, evasion techniques. Um, so now we were on to something, right? You're on to something. So the next thing is, of course, just doing a cat of pt.upp plist. And if we scroll up, what you would see is, you know, of course, going through Google, uh, you can see that this application support, library application support, pt.uppd, that was where, uh, or updd, that was where it was at. You can see that it has two parameters uh, that it is passing watch and auto update. And the key thing here is keep alive. So they have a key, a uh, little tag, which allows you to keep the uh, application alive. So it runs this application every single time that you log in through the launch agents. And you can see that then, okay, yeah, this is keeping it alive. So that that's where you get that really annoying dialog box. Now, the thing that was interesting while taking a look at this plist file was com popcorn time pt updd. At this point, I figured, okay, maybe this is another thing that we can take a look into. Perhaps this is another area where this uh, binary resides. So. Uh, if you were to take a look into this area, which I will do that now, of course, um, you know, using that find command on string matching, what you would find is if we go to the home directory, so her home library, and we did application. So here we can see um, some of the com apple file locations here. And if you take a look at the SE popcorn time, just do a CD into this and an LS. I'm not going to do an LS LA. I'll show her username, but basically there was nothing in here. So at this point, I figured, okay, what was this? So if you take a look at the saved application state folder, um, basically what this does is allows you to resume applications after perhaps an unexpected shutdown. So I knew at this point, okay, we're on to something and perhaps we have deleted this. So what I did was I um, del deleted the live sample, as mentioned, committed the activity monitor, then you know, the plist, I disrupted that, basically that operation. Um, if we were to go back into uh, the plist file here, you can see that the way that I kind of, I don't know, alter this just to keep some evidence around was um, instead of doing a uh, application support pt.uppd, I, I just, it was, this is a different directory structure, just showcasing how you would defang a malware. So at this point, I knew basically we were done, um, and that's about it. So, you know, a uh, very anticlimactic type of analysis here, but I've always wanted to do some plist investigation, uh, and this was a good opportunity to do it. As mentioned, this is just kind of more of an, a potentially unwanted program, maybe adware for popcorn time. Uh, and so if you're an individual who uses Mac OS on the daily, what can you do? Well, Apple does a pretty good job of keeping their systems updated and uh, continually pushing you or prompting you for updates. And they have an antivirus, native antivirus X-Protect that does a pretty good job. Um, other recommendations include ensuring that you're only installing applications through the application store. Um, so you're not sideloading or going through random websites. And, you know, of course, the common advice of don't download just random things from the internet always do perhaps a bit of investiga investigatory work, um, specifically if it is something that isn't in the application or app store, Apple app store, maybe just go on virus total, kind of take a look around and s ensure that you are installing something that is relatively, you know, uh, benign. So, so uh, yeah, this was the small investigation. 
really the key to this investigation today is to always take a look at those plist files um, to always ensure that uh, you you isolate the device so i took it off the network of course and that you are um, ensuring that you can kind of keep some evidence or artifacts around and in this case this is exactly what i did all right so that is it for the malware artifact analysis very basic um you know i've kind of failed here as a cybersecurity enthusiast, I guess. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little fun video. Uh, you know, of course, I made sure this was okay with my wife and, and she was totally fine with it. If you would like to see some more advanced malware analysis on macOS, I would be intrigued to learn and perhaps maybe showcase uh, maybe Crash Course. And yes, until the next video, have a good day.